Whatever you're looking for in a full-sized executive car, it's very likely that you'll find it in this one, the 7th generation BMW 5 Series. Weight savings and clever new driving technology features have restored this model's traditional leadership in this segment when it comes to drive dynamics. There's also a sumptuous interior, a host of media connectivity and some really cutting edge safety features. In short, it's a rejuvenated proposition. For well over four decades now, the question facing customers in the segment for full-sized executive cars has less been why they should choose a BMW 5 Series, but why they shouldn't. This was the car that ruled its marketplace, the business buyer's ultimate driving machine. So what are we to make of this, the seventh generation version? It certainly has a lot to live up to. One in every five BMWs purchased worldwide is a 5 Series, and over 8 million of them have been sold since the original version was launched back in 1972. This modern model's direct predecessor, launched back in 2009, proved to be the highest grossing 5 to date, clocking up over 2.2 million sales, despite press and public reservations that driving dynamics had been diluted in search of a more luxurious demeanour. A 2013 model year update improved things a bit in that regard, reminding us that a 5 Series could still be a dominant driving machine, but buyers were required to specify lots of costly extras to make it so. That had to change to keep this car competitive against tough rivals like the improved Audi A6 and the super sophisticated 10th generation Mercedes E-Class. And on paper, the prospects look good. Now, despite appearances, the Mark 7 model 5 Series is new from the ground up. It's lighter and more aerodynamic with sophisticated chassis upgrades and options like rear wheel steering that together are said to make this car almost as agile as its smaller 3 Series stablemate. Uh, the engine lineup has been heavily upgraded to make the most of it all. And as a result, across the range, buyers can expect around 10% more performance along with an 11% rise in efficiency. Want a full-sized executive car that can be more frugal than an entry-level Fiesta? Well, the Volume 520D variant can provide just that. And there's the potential to do even better if you can stretch to a plug-in hybrid power plant. On top of all that, there's a little more space inside, a big step up in cabin quality and some quite astonishing technology, including another step towards autonomous driving. This is, in short, a state-of-the-art contender that's quite impossible to ignore in this segment. And we're going to put it to the test. For us, the previous generation version of this BMW never quite felt as sharp and eager as a 5 Series should. Uh, it could still better obvious rivals through the turns if you spec'd it right, but in standard form it was just a bit too heavy and too soft to be the ultimate driving machine uh, that's promised by the Munich makers advertising. You don't have to drive this replacement 7th generation model very hard or very far to realise that this time around things are much better, principally because the car is more agile and it responds quicker to your commands. Losing 100 kilos in weight will do that for you. But of course, full-sized executive models of this sort spend most of their lives on undemanding motorways, racking up the miles. And that's an environment in which a rival Mercedes E-Class feels supreme if you've optioned the car up with full air suspension. Now, a little surprisingly, BMW hasn't developed a similar system for this car, which is strange because it does offer one on the larger 7 Series. There is an air suspended rear axle for the 5 Series Touring Estate variant, but that's to improve load capacity rather than luxury. So, has the Munich maker missed a trick here? Well, possibly. It's certainly true that the ride of a 5 Series with standard damping could be better on unsettled surfaces, and that's especially true if you specify the larger wheels and the firmer suspension that comes with the M Sport trim that we're trying here. Whether expensive air springing is really necessary to provide the required improvement though is quite another question. This particular car has the optional VDC variable adaptive damping system fitted and with that in place and the comfort setting selected we found that this car really can provide just about everything you'd really want when it comes to suspension and suppleness. 
VDC works through the comfort, sport and eco pro settings of the standard drive performance control system that all BMWs get, uh, which is ever enables you to tweak the steering, the throttle response, uh, the gear change timings and the stability control thresholds to suit the way that you want to drive. Uh, another advantage of having the optional VDC setup fitted is that it entitles you to get a fourth drive performance control option, uh, the kind of set and forget auto style setting that we've been asking the Munich maker to provide for ages. Now the extra mode is badged adaptive and if your 5 has this then you'll probably end up uh, selecting it pretty much all the time just as we've done. The advantage of doing this not only lies in your being relieved of the need to make decisions about driving setup, uh, the computer software does all that for you, it also lies in the way that predictive technology is introduced into the process. The system using the sat-nav to prime the car for upcoming hazards like sharp bends or junctions. It all works so smoothly that you're never really aware that so much is going on behind the scenes to make your journey uh, smoother and more efficient. As for the engine and transmission package on offer, well, that has got a familiar look to it, uh, at least in terms of diesel power anyway. Right across the range, all models get the usual BMW 8-speed auto transmission. Uh, there's no longer any sort of manual gearbox option. And this 520D diesel variant, and that's the one that almost everyone chooses, continues with an improved version of essentially the same 2.0-litre four-cylinder twin-power turbo unit that was used by the previous generation model. Now though, it develops 190 bhp and 400 Nm of torque, enough to see 62 miles an hour from rest flashed by in just 7.5 seconds en route to 146 miles an hour if you're quick with the steering wheel mounted puddle shifters. If you want a diesel variant with more pulling power, the 3 litre 6 cylinder unit of the 265 bhp uh, 530d model beckons, offering 620 Nm of shove and improving the 0 to 62 miles an hour time to 5.7 seconds on the way to a 155 miles an hour maximum speed that's common to all conventional 5 series variants above 520d level. Another 3 litre 6 cylinder unit can be found at the top of the mainstream petrol engine lineup, namely the 340 bhp power plant that sits beneath the bonnet of a potent 540i variant, able to sprint to 62 miles an hour in just 4.8 seconds. The primary 5 series petrol engine though is a 252 bhp 2 litre 4 cylinder unit that's offered in two distinct forms. Uh, you get it uh, conventionally in the 530i variant, but it also comes mated to a 95 bhp electric motor. And I'm 2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery as part of the plug in hybrid package provided by the iPerformance 530e model. Now, if you do want an alternative to diesel for your 5, then we think the argument in favour of the 530e is quite compelling. Now, once you've taken a government subsidies into account, it doesn't cost much more than a 530i and it offers an all-electric driving range of up to 29 miles that you can manage via three provided e-drive modes, um, auto e-drive, max e-drive and save. Now, unlike some other hybrids, the car defaults to electrified power as often as it can and in the max e-drive setting, the car will have an all-electric top speed of 75 miles an hour. One thing that's changed since the last time BMW launched a 5 Series model is the interest that segment buyers now have in all-wheel drive, something that the Munich maker satisfies with its X-Drive system. Uh, now this setup is standard on the top 540i petrol variant and optional on the two mainstream diesel models, working via a Haldex-style multi-plate clutch that can push up to 80% of drive to either the front or rear wheels to suit whatever tractional needs you might happen to have. Um, 5 Series buyers who like the idea of power going to both ends of the car might also like the idea of steering taking place at both front and rear axles too. That's what you get with the optional integral active steering system, which uses a variable steering rack ratio that works as you turn the wheel, uh, moving the rear wheels in either of two ways, depending on how fast you're going. So at parking speeds, the rear wheels will turn in the opposite direction to those at the front for greater maneuverability. And if you're going much more quickly at speed through tight corners, then the rear wheels will turn in the same direction as those at the front, uh, which will give you greater stability and agility. 
if you want to go further in terms of cornering mastery and you've already taken our advice and uh, specified that VDC adaptive damping system that I was recommending earlier, your dealer will introduce you to another pricey option, adaptive drive. Now this setup uses automatically adjustable anti-roll bars that give uh, lots of suspension movement for a great ride in a straight line, uh, yet they spring into action through the bends to compensate for the body roll that you would otherwise get. And of course, when you match all of this up with the benefits of that adaptive driving performance control setting we were talking about earlier, uh, with predictive navigation data, uh, anticipates and allows for the next bump or turn, and you have all the ingredients for a beautiful ride and handling balance. There's even semi-autonomous driving capability if you further add in all the many and varied electronic camera-driven features that come with the optional driving assistant packs. Now, if your budget can't stretch to all this extra kit, don't worry. Traditionally, buyers in the full-sized executive segment have turned to a 5 Series, prioritising a damn good drive, and we're pleased to be able to report that even in its most ordinary form, this BMW can now, once again, provide exactly that. Even without the X-Drive system, you'll uh, get impressive and confidence-inspiring front-end grip, and after a little time at the wheel, you'll find yourself forgetting about this car's imposing dimensions and hurling it through the bends with the sort of enthusiasm that would normally be reserved for much smaller machines. True, the steering is a touch lighter than we'd ideally like, but it is very accurate. Plus, the 8-speed ZF Auto Box changes down with rifle quick speed, and the brakes are brilliant. More importantly, perhaps, refinement is outstanding, thanks to what BMW calls Syntac technology that essentially encases the whole engine compartment in soundproof material. Factor in the slippery aerodynamics and the special acoustic glazing, and it's not surprising that wind noise is virtually absent, and all you can hear from the engine engine is a pleasingly muted growl. Over nearly half a century of production, there have certainly been moments of note in 5 Series design. The original E12 version of 1972 and the Mark V E60 model of 2003 both come to mind. Overall, though, this car has generally been characterised by the kind of confident but conservative styling that features on this 7th generation G30 version. Now, as expected, this 5 borrows heavily from aesthetic cues established by its smaller 3 series and bigger 7 series stablemates, and it shares much under the skin with that larger car. The CLAR cluster architecture underpinnings are in fact pretty much the same as you'd find in a 7, although BMW has stopped short of incorporating that pricier model's expensive carbon fibre reinforced carbon core. Even without that though, this Mark 7 5 Series model still weighs in 100 kilos lighter than its predecessor, despite the fact that it's longer, wider and slightly taller than before. Now, customers for cars of this kind want overtaking presence, and there's a bit more of that this time around here at the front, where the twin circular hand lamps on each side of the car feature full LED beams as standard and can optionally be specified with a selective beam anti-dazzle high beam system that works at a range of up to 500 meters. Uh, these lights now connect seamlessly with the familiar BMW kidney grille, the width of which is replicated further down by a lower air intake uh, that's flanked by prominent scooped uh, side vents featuring horizontal LED fog lamps. Now in profile, the long bonnet and the setback passenger cell are very apparent, and they work in concert with a very short front overhang to deliver what BMW hopes is a sportier look. Now from this perspective, uh, you also get a feel for just how large this 5 has now become. This Mark 7 model's 36mm increase in length, making it pretty much as big as a 7 series was a decade or so ago. Of all the design details, this air breather vent behind the front wheel arch is probably the most notable, working with the air curtain openings in the front apron to manage airflow across the wheel arches. And those can house rims between uh, 16 and 20 inches in size. We've got the 19 inches here. A prominent lower crease uh, eases its way rearwards from the air breather slash, while further up, a deep waistline groove has been pressed into the aluminium alloy coachwork and flows back through the door handles uh, to a rear seat pillar characterised by the usual BMW Hofmeister kink.
Move to the back and you'll find LED light clusters with horizontal strips that aim to emphasize a lower, wider look. And the lenses are reaching right deep into the sides of the car, creating a visual connection between the flanks and the rear end. Uh, go for the M Sport trim fitted here and you get a restyled bumper fitted out with a diffuser style lower section that's flanked by tailpipes on either side that are either circular or trapezoidal in shape, depending on the engine and the trim level you've selected. Time to step inside, and even before you do, signs of thoughtful, futuristic design are constantly close at hand. Now pay for this optional display key, and you'll find that even this part of the car has been given a thorough makeover. It incorporates a tiny integrated touchscreen, allowing you to see um, if you've locked the car, uh, check how much fuel remains, and either pre-warm or pre-cool the cabin before you get in. Now if you pay more for the remote control parking system, and via this volume, you can even manoeuvre your 5 Series into a tight space while you're standing on the pavement. And once you're in the cabin, the design approach seems less understated than it is outside, and it feels very sophisticated. Virtual dials coss at your eyes through this beautifully tactile three-spoke wheel, while uh, at the top of the centre stack lies a big 10.25-inch colour iDrive screen that welcomes you on first-name terms to the 5 Series driving experience. Now, those may be the first things you'll notice, but shortly after, you'll be struck by the sheer quality on offer here. All the materials used, even those lower down, feel great to touch with proper leather and metal finishing that feels very special indeed. True, there is perhaps more of a similarity to lesser BMW models than some well-heeled owners might want, but otherwise they lay out is very difficult to fault. In true BMW style, the standard leather-powered seats position you slightly lower than would normally be the case in a car of this class, and as you'd expect, they're extremely comfortable. Or at least they are if you specify the optional comfort chairs with extra-cost lumbar support. Uh, the slightly lower dash design improves all-round visibility, and on the move, we found the virtual dials to be very effective. Now, we especially like the way that the dial numbers are highlighted as the needle approaches them, and the way that the gauge display areas are configurable in different ways to show a variety of information, such as fuel consumption and sat nav instructions. Mind you, it won't be necessary to look at any of this very much if you've gone for the optional head-up display that we've been trying here. It's 75% larger than it is on smaller BMWs, so there's space for it to be all the more informative as a result. Anything you can't learn from the readouts ahead of you will be covered off by that vast center dash professional multimedia and navigation system iDrive display screen we mentioned earlier. We like the straightforward, intuitive way it works. The monitor divided into simple connected drive, uh, media radio, navigation, my vehicle, communications and notification segments. The connected drive menu is particularly informative, delivering a range of downloadable apps and access to BMW's suite of online services that are designed to enhance your journey by sending you up-to-date information while you're at the wheel. So everything from weather and latest news to a rainfall radar, and an online search system. Options include a concierge service and an online entertainment package that will give you direct access to millions of music tracks. It's also possible to connect in Microsoft Exchange 365 to your car so you can control your inbox and sync your calendar. Uh, as normal, you can operate the whole thing either by voice or by twisting the usual iDrive controller down by the gear stick. What's different this time around, though, is that there are two further operational options. The addition of a touchscreen interface on this central iDrive screen is something we perhaps might have expected. Uh, the display now responds to smartphone style pinches and swipes, but gesture control is something that'll be genuinely new for buyers in this segment. Uh, now, this optional system recognizes up to six gestures via a 3D sensor at the base of the control display. So, a twirl of your outstretched finger will vary the volume control, um, while a jab towards the screen will allow you to answer a call. Now, the idea is that these kinds of gestures can uh, be performed without you taking your eyes off the road. Um, in practice, though, uh, we found that the sense of response is frustratingly patchy unless precisely the right kind of motion is performed. And that will often leave you in a situation where you appear to be making an obscene gesture to another road user. 
Cabin practicality is another area where a little more development might not go amiss. Um, neither the glove box nor the door bins are especially big and there's nowhere to put your sunglasses. This leather topped twin lidded storage box between the seats is nothing like as deep as you expect it'll be. Uh, we do though like this covered cubby ahead of the gear stick which features a beautifully damped sliding top and that glides back to reveal twin cup holders and also a compartment for your phone and that can uh, incorporate an optional wireless charging mat. Another nice touch is the standard ambient lighting system that can bathe the cabin uh, in a number of shades green, yellow, orange, blue, lilac or white. So let's take a seat in the rear. Now that's easier to do this time around because the doors swing open wide and the revised aperture you enter through is now usefully tall. And now earlier we mentioned that this 7th generation 5 is virtually as big as the larger 7 series model from a decade or so ago. And the stats here uh, bear that out, particularly in terms of the extra knee room and leg room that come courtesy of this improved model's uh, seven millimeters of extra wheelbase length. There is still a fraction less space than you get in a rival E-Class or XF, but the differences aren't very great. Uh, further emphasizing this improvement is the way that BMW has redesigned this rear bench so that a perch in the middle of it is no longer quite so uncomfortable. As a result, this car can now be a much more credible adult five-seater, should the need arise for it to be so. Uh, although the middle rear occupant will still be inhibited by this rather high center transmission tunnel. If there are only two of you, then this center armrest drops down to provide a couple of cup holders. Other storage options, though, are pretty limited, uh, just the two central shelves and some pretty small door bins. So finally, let's raise the aluminium boot lid and have a look at the luggage area. Uh, in this saloon model, it boasts a small 10 litre increase in size to 530 litres. That's thanks to the now longer rear overhang. That total is only a fraction less than an E-Class or an XF. Now with the plug-in hybrid 530E variant, it'll be 120 litres smaller than that because the 9.2 kWh battery pack pinches a bit of that space. Uh, there's a lower load sill than the previous generation model could offer and the entrance is larger too. Plus you get this leaded compartment and netted storage area on the left with a further compartment on the right for the owner's manual. Loading up a couple of large suitcases is easy with little intrusion from either the wheel arches or the suspension and there are securing hooks to tie down loads safely. For those times when more room's needed, you'll want the option to be able to fold down the rear backrest to extend the boot area, uh, something that rather annoyingly BMW charges you extra for. At least if you do go for this feature, uh, you'll get the flexibility of a useful 40-20-40 split so that longer items like skis can be pushed through while still retaining the ability to comfortably accommodate a couple of rear seated folk. Of course, if you are going to be needing that sort of capacity very often, you'll be better off going for the Touring Estate version of this model, which offers a 570 litre boot in conventional form, extendable up to 1700 litres if you flatten the rear seat. Uh, that station wagon variant can also take quite heavy loads of up to 730 kilos thanks to an air suspension system provided on the rear axle. On to pricing. Now expect to pay somewhere in the 36 to 46,000 pound bracket for mainstream models and the majority of buyers tend to pay a required premium of just over 2,300 pounds to get the touring estate version rather than this uh, four door saloon. Uh, all variants come only with eight speed automatic transmission and if you avoid the base 520D diesel derivative, uh, you'll get the sport version of that gearbox which offers uh, quicker change characteristics. Very few 5 Series buyers do avoid the 520D however. In fact, almost 85% of customers choose this 190 bhp model which is why we're testing it here. Uh, stick with this in rear wheel drive guys and there's the option of paying another £1,200 for a frugally orientated efficient dynamics variant which will put out just 102 grams per kilometer of co2 there's quite a purchase price jump if you're going to consider any other engine in the range. Uh, the petrol models start with a 252bhp 530i at around 40,000, but a better bet would be the 530e plug-in hybrid variant, which uses the same 2-litre four-cylinder engine and which won't cost you much more once the available government grant's been subtracted from the asking price. 
Step up to three litre six cylinder power and you'll need a budget either just below or just above the 45,000 pound mark if you're going to consider either the 265 bhp 530d diesel or the 340 bhp 540i petrol variants. Now, the brand's X-Drive 4x4 system is standard on the 540i and offered at a premium of around £2,000 on the two main diesel models. As for rivals, well, uh, you'll almost certainly be looking at the three models that really dominate the full-sized executive sector, Adi's A6, Mercedes E-Class and Jaguar's XF. Now, BMW probably rightly thinks the Mercedes is the biggest threat and it's priced this uh, 5 Series directly against it. Now, this 5 is better to drive than its E-Class counterpart. And if you do happen to be looking at the six-cylinder diesel option, it's also vastly more economic to run. Uh, as for the Audi and the Jaguar, well, um, if you are considering this 520D as a benchmark, then equivalent base diesel A6 and XF models would save you around two and a half to three thousand pounds in terms of upfront purchase price. But in neither case would you be able to match the economic returns of this BOW or the astonishing levels of technology. Are there other options? Well, not really many credible ones. If you're prepared to try something really different, minority interest choice in this segment include cars like Volvo's S90, Infiniti's Q70 and the Lexus GS. But although they are a little cheaper than this BMW, those cars are more expensive to run, mainly because they really suffer when it comes to depreciation. If having considered all this, you conclude that it is a 5 Series that you really want, then you'll be wanting to know exactly how generous BMW has been when it comes to standard equipment. So, let's take a look at that. Now, even with base SE spec, you can expect Dakota leather upholstery, full LED headlights and virtual instrument dials. Uh, as for commoner luxury features that are expected as standard at this price point, well, you get 17-inch alloy wheels on 520D models or 18-inch rims further up the range. Uh, plus, there's two-zone automatic air conditioning, front and rear park distance control sensors, auto headlamps and wipers, ambient lighting, uh, front seat heating and electrical adjustment, an auto dimming rear view mirror, um, cruise control, a smart three spoke sport leather steering wheel, uh, LED brake lights, chrome tailpipes and run flat tires and a category one alarm. Plus there's a powered tailgate on the touring model. In addition, as with the brand's other models, you also get a drive performance control system that will allow you to tweak the steering, the throttle and the gear change timings to suit the way that you want to drive. There are though a few missing items that really ought to be included as standard on a car of this price. Things like driver seat lumbar adjustment and a split folding rear seat on the saloon model. Those will both cost you extra. Plus surprisingly, you also have to pay more for Apple CarPlay phone connectivity. You can add this in relatively cheaply though, and unusually and impressively, the Apple CarPlay connection works without any cables. Now that apart, uh, media connectivity is extremely well taken care of by an impressive BMW professional multimedia system with voice control that works via a 10.25 inch color touchscreen. Now that is your access point for a whole host of standard elements, uh, 3D navigation, six speaker DAB radio, a 20 gigabyte hard disk drive, Bluetooth hands-free connection, and uh, access to the full suite of BMW connected drive services, including teleservices and and real-time traffic information. Plus, the brand's suite of online services that gives you access to things like news reports, uh, weather forecasts, and a whole range of BMW apps. In addition, the system will read out your text messages to you. And also available with every 5 Series model is a downloadable BMW Connected app, which auto-learns your frequent journeys and will list them when you're most likely to drive them. Now the other standard trim option for 5 Series buyers is the one almost half of them choose, the M Sport spec that we're trying here, offered at a premium of between three and £3,300 over an SE model. Now at this level, you get a more dynamic look, courtesy of M Aerodynamics body styling, a high gloss shadow line exterior trim, LED fog lights and desirable M double spoke alloy wheels that are 18 inches in size on this 520D variant, with other variants getting 19 inch rims and an M 
M Sport braking system. Inside, there's sports seats and M specific trim for the steering wheel, the pedals, uh, the floor mats, the door sill finishes, and the front side panels. Plus, there's anthracite headlining. Uh, all M Sport models have firmer suspension that sits the car 10 millimeters lower to the ground, but on request, that can be deleted at no extra cost in favor of the SE variant's softer setup. On to options. Now, with the previous generation model, you had to add in all kinds of pricey elements of dynamic technology if you were going to make your 5 Series into a really enjoyable driving machine. This time around, though, the only one of these we think you really have to have is VDC, variable damper control, that adjusts the suspension based on the setting that's selected from the drive performance control system that I mentioned earlier. Now, without VDC, the ride can sometimes be a little over firm, especially with the larger wheel sizes or with the stiffened suspension that's used on the M Sport models. If you want to go further, your dealer will introduce you to the adaptive drive system that pairs that VDC adaptive damping setup with a dynamic drive active roll stabilization package that uses active front and rear anti-roll bars to reduce body roll. Now, if you're interested in the adaptive drive package, then you're probably a sort of 5 Series buyer who would also like to consider the integral active steering option. Now, this offers variable ratio power steering and rear axial steering for a tighter turning circle and greater cornering stability. Now, if you want, uh, integral active steering can be paired with the extra cost uh, X Drive four wheel drive setup we mentioned earlier. And you can also have X Drive with lowered passive M Sport suspension if you really must have that really stiff damping setup. Now, once you've got all the driving stuff right in your 5 Series, you can start to consider some, well, less crucial niceties. Now, we think you've really got to have this achingly cool display key with its built-in color touchscreen. Now this allows remote control of the ventilation system. So for example, you can warm the car up or cool it down while you're having breakfast and you'll be able to check whether you close the doors, uh, when a service is due and how much fuel you've got. Now you'll need to have specified a display key if you're going to take up the remote control parking option that BMW offers of being able to remotely direct your 5 Series into a parking space while you stand by and watch. <laughs> Just imagine doing that in the office car park. Another optional extra we'd find hard to resist is the gesture control feature that allows you to activate many cabin features with a mere waft of your hand. And it'd be very nice to have the now much improved head-up display, which is far more informative than rival systems. Now, all three of these features are available as individual extras, or they're included as part of the technology pack that we've been trying here. Now, this also helps you create in the 5 Series a real office on the move, courtesy of two further features. Uh, a Wi-Fi hotspot addition to the infotainment system that offers a high-speed LTE internet connection for up to 10 devices, and enhanced Bluetooth Bluetooth with wireless charging and uh, that's a feature that recharges your smartphone when you place it in the tray ahead of the gear lever. Four more optional packages are also worth factoring into your deliberations. Uh, a visibility package includes a high beam assistant that will automatically dip your headlights at night, uh, plus headlamp washers and icon adaptive LED headlights that deliver the best forward illumination in any circumstances. Uh, you could also specify a premium package that offers powered boot opening, four zone air conditioning, um, massaging comfort spec front seats, a polished ceramic finish for the controls, and an ambient air system that adds a fragrance to the ventilation. Now this particular car has the Comfort package and that consists of electric front seats with lumbar support and memory settings, uh, power folding door mirrors, a reversing assist camera and Comfort Access keyless entry which includes a powered boot lid or tailgate that you can activate with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. Now another pack fitted to this car is the M Sport Plus package that gives you larger wheels with 19 inches on the 520D and 20 inch rims on the other variants, plus an M rear spoiler, sun protection glass and a 600 watt 16 speaker Harman Kardon audio system. 
Now we should point out that many of the features in the various packs we just mentioned can be ordered as individual extras if you'd like to take a more, well, a la carte approach to specifying the car. So take the audio system for example. That Harman Kardon loudspeaker package represents one of three choices you can make. Now if you merely want a modest upgrade from the standard audio setup, then your dealer will uh, direct you towards the affordable BMW Advanced option. If on the other hand, uh, what you want is the ultimate listening experience, well, nothing but the top Bowers & Wilkins Diamond surround sound system will do. Now this has quantum logic surround technology with five sound settings, a 10 channel amplifier, uh, 1400 watt output and 16 speakers. Beyond audio upgrades, there are various extra media connectivity options you can add to. Um, remote services allow you to control many aspects of your car's operation via your smartphone. Uh, you might also want a three-year subscription to BMW's concierge service that at the press of a button will give you direct access to an operator and that operator will be able to answer well, pretty much any question about your journey as you drive. Uh, to be honest, we could do without that, uh, but we'd be very tempted by the optional online entertainment package. Now that will give you direct access to millions of music tracks from either Deezer or Napster without the need for a mobile or an MP3 device in the car. As part of this, you can access your own music via cloud-based services. So for example, you could create a playlist at home and then have that available to stream into your car. Business buyers will also want to consider optional Microsoft Office Exchange 365 connectivity that in-car will allow them to control emails in their inbox and sync their online calendar. And finally, if you really want to push the boat out, other options include a TV tuner and a rear seat entertainment experience package that provides backseat occupants with a couple of 10.2 inch screens that work with a DVD Blu-ray player and provide connections for MP3 players, USB devices, games consoles and wireless headphones. Away from media connectivity, other individual nice-to-have items you could add include adaptive headlights that adjust themselves to road conditions, an electric glass sunroof, sun protection glass, sun blinds for the rear screen and the rear side windows, um, cooled ventilation and a massage system for the front seats, steering wheel heating and soft closed doors like those that are fitted to this car that pull themselves shut if you don't quite tug firmly enough on them. In addition, there's an ambient air package that ionizes the cabin air and perfumes it via two scent bottles that are stored in the glove box. Now you'll also be offered two optional parking packages. The parking assistant option will help you into parallel and lateral parking spaces with active park distance control sensors and a reversing assist camera. And parking assistant plus adds to that with a remote 3D view surround camera system. Now, while we are on the subject of cameras, there's also a night vision with pedestrian recognition system that gives you infrared night vision. Although so good are the standard LED headlamps that we really doubt you'll ever need that. On to aesthetics. Uh, many buyers are gonna to want to pay extra for one of the metallic paint shades. We've got the bluestone finish here. Uh, you can add in either chrome line or satin aluminium exterior trim and complete the effect with a bespoke selection from a range of alloy wheels that vary from 17 to 20 inches in size. Uh, now you want to get the look of the interior right too, either with a BMW individual piano black trim or with your selection from a range of wood finishes or with pearl chrome highlights. As for upholstery, well you can swap the standard Dakota hide for softer exclusive Nappa leather upholstery with contrast stitching and if you really want to go to town there is the BMW individual program that lets you choose a bespoke cabin specification and will offer extra upholstery choices that include fine grain merino leather. Uh, as for practical touches, well earlier we mentioned the need to pay extra on the saloon model for the through loading system that gives you 40-20-40 split folding rear seats and can also be embellished with a through loading ski bag. You may also want an additional 12 volt socket, uh, fitted luggage compartment mat and the leather case that BMW can provide to protect that display key. Now if you are going to be carrying lots of equipment with you, you might need the optional fully electric retractable tow bar 
and possibly also the BMW roof system with its rails for carrying roof boxes and attachments for skis, snowboards and cycles. Now finally, we would also want to add the optional BMW Trackstar tracking system on a car of this value. On to safety. Now, you'll be expecting this car to be state-of-the-art in this regard, as BMW claims it is. Now, we think it's more accurate to say it can be, as to get the choicest electronic features, you have to spend quite a lot more. Now, before getting to those, we'll start with the basic stuff. So, every 5 Series model features tyre pressure monitoring and twin front and side airbags, plus active head restraints that prevent whiplash. In addition, you get head and curtain airbags for both front and rear seats, and, of course, Isofix charge seat fastenings. Now so that hopefully you'll never have to use any of that stuff, there's all the usual electronic assistance for traction, stability and braking, including hill start assist, brake drying and brake fade compensation. And in addition, the infotainment system's standard suite of BMW connected drive features includes a BMW emergency call, which will alert the emergency services uh, should you ever have an accident and direct them to your exact GPS location. Uh, should you be prepared to spend more on safety kit, then your dealer will offer you various options. Uh, there's an extra cost dynamic safety system that instantly senses if an accident situation is imminent. And if so, will automatically pre-tension the seat bolts, close the windows and the sunroof and position the driver's seat in the optimum safety position. It'll also brake the car after an impact, trying to ensure that you don't go on to hit anything else. Now you might also want to consider the extra cost driving assistant pack that includes six further electronic camera driven features. Now perhaps most important of these is what BMW calls the approach control warning and person warning with city braking function. Now basically this is one of those autonomous braking systems that uh, scans the road ahead as you drive in search of potential accident hazards, either vehicles or people. Now if one's detected, you'll be warned. Uh, if you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, now, to be honest, we are a bit surprised that that feature isn't fit as standard. As for the other five driving assistant pack features, well, a lane change warning feature that detects vehicles in your blind spot if you're just about to pull out to overtake, a speed limit information setup that pictures speed signs as you pass them and then displays them on the dash, and a crossing traffic warning uh, that uses radar sensors to check for approaching traffic when you're backing out of a perpendicular parking space. Also very useful is the prevention of rear collision feature that helps you to avoid rear end impacts by automatically flashing the hazard lights at vehicles that are following your 5 Series too closely, while at the same time uh, preparing the car for an impact should the worst happen. Now, if you want to go further, a pricier Driving Assistant Plus pack gives you all the Driving Assistant pack features, plus a portfolio of eight additional items. Now, one we haven't seen before is the Lane Change Assistant, which works between 43 and 83 miles an hour and will take over the steering and change lanes for you with just a stab on the indicator stalk. Two other highway orientated features sound similar but aren't. Uh, the steering and lane control assistant. Now this doesn't just warn you if you're drifting out of lane, but they can actively do something about the problem, subtly but firmly steering you back to where you should be on the road. Now there's also a lane keeping assistant with active side collision protection. Now this feature is able to monitor the proximity of other vehicles and actively prevent collisions from the side. Uh, plus, highway travel can be aided by active cruise control with a stop and go function. Two other driving assistant plus pack features we like include the evasion aid, which supports uh, the necessary evasive steering action you'll need to take if an obstacle suddenly appears in your path, and crossing traffic warning front, uh, and that's a system that helps you to spot traffic as you edge out of junctions. Now finally, the pack includes two clever features that use the navigation system. Cross-road warning flags up dangers at stop signs and cross-road locations, and wrong-way warning alerts you if you're going the wrong way down a one-way street. BMW has gone to great lengths to improve the efficiency of this 7th generation 5 series as it needed to do given the impressively high standards set by this uh, car's arch rival in the segment, the 10th generation Mercedes E-Class. 
This 5 isn't quite as advanced under the skin as its larger 7 Series stablemate. That car has what BMW calls a carbon core, the term referring to its innovative carbon fibre reinforced plastic injection construction. Instead, the designers here have been content with a mix of magnesium, aluminium and high strength steel. But even so, that's been enough to save as much as 100 kilos over the weight of the previous generation 5 Series model. Now that is not enough to match or beat the Jaguar XF, the lightest car in the class, but it is sufficient to make the uh, Volume 520D model 45 kilos lighter than its Mercedes E220D counterpart. As a result of that, here are the stats that will get the approval of your accountant or your company fleet manager. 72.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 102 grams per kilometer of CO2. These apply to the efficient dynamics version of the 520D diesel variant and they're exactly the same readings as you get from that rival Mercedes E220D, which surely cannot be a coincidence. Now with the Merc, these class leading figures apply to the ordinary model, but with this BMW you have to pay around £1,200 for the eco-minded efficient dynamics 520D trim level if you're going to enjoy them. If you go for an ordinary 520D, you're looking at 68.8 mpg and 108 grams per kilometre. And if you go for a 520D like the one we're trying here with the larger wheels that come as part of M Sport trim, the figures fall again to 65.6 mpg and 114 grams per kilometre. If you add in the X-Drive four-wheel drive system to any ordinary 520D, uh, you'll hit those returns by about 10%. Want a pokier 5 Series diesel? Well, then the 6-cylinder 530D beckons. Here, BMW really does have a huge advantage over equivalent 6-cylinder diesel rivals. You're looking at 60.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 124 grams per kilometre of CO2. In comparison, directly comparable Mercedes E350D and Jaguar XF 3-litre D models both deliver only 144 grams per kilometre and they struggle to manage much more than 50 mpg on the combined cycle. Uh, should you wish to order your 530D with the X-Drive system, there is again a 10% running cost penalty to pay, but such is that variant's advantage over its rivals that you could order that four-wheel drive derivative and still end up with a car that was slightly cheaper to run than those two-wheel drive Merc and Jag competitors. BMW is very aware of the current environmental backlash against diesel engines, which is why this Munich maker's engineers have gone all out to try and make their twin power units class leadingly clean. All 5 Series diesels operate using BMW Blue Performance technology, which combines close coupled particulate filters and oxidation catalysts with a nitrogen oxide storage catalyst. For exhaust gas after treatment, uh, there's selective catalytic reduction technology, including a water-cooled metering module for the AdBlue fluid, which serves to cut nitrogen oxide emissions still further. Now, you're probably familiar with AdBlue by now because most modern Euro 6 diesel power plants use it. It's a urea additive that mixes with the hot exhaust gases from the engine, and as the urea combines with these fumes, it turns many of the harmful chemicals into nothing more noxious and water and nitrogen and that's what makes up most of the Earth's atmosphere. So tell all that to the bar stall experts who will talk as if diesel cars are alone responsible for smogging up our cities. If you do care about satisfying those people and you want returns that are even better than is possible than any 5 Series diesel, then you'll need the clever 530e petrol electric plug-in hybrid variant. Now this draws on BMW's iPerformance technology, mating a 252bhp 4-cylinder petrol engine with a 95bhp electric motor and a 92 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery. As a result, this package can boast the usual unlikely sounding returns that are applied to models with power plants of this kind. In this case, 141.2 mpg on the combined cycle and 46 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's based, uh, of course, on using the full 29 mile range of the battery, which can be fully charged in as little as around 2 hours and 15 minutes from a dedicated charging point. To help maximise efficiency, a provided e-drive button lets the driver of that electrified 5 Series swap between auto e-drive, uh, max e-drive and uh, save battery modes. In the first of those settings, the car will work on electric power alone up to 50 miles an hour, but if you select max, then the car will have an all-electric top speed of 75 miles an hour. 
Uh, in the save position, uh, the system sends as much energy as possible to the batteries for future use, so you can store it up for later in your trip when you might want to drive around town with zero tailpipe emissions. Uh, the difference that all that plug-in hybrid technology makes is clearly evident when you switch your attention to the conventional 530i petrol model, which uses the same 252 bhp engine as you'll find in the 530e, but obviously without all those hybrid additions. Um, here the combined cycle figure is 48.7 mpg and the CO2 return is 132 grams per kilometre. The other mainstream petrol model is the V6-powered 340 bhp 540i, which comes only with extra drive four-wheel drive and which manages 39.2 miles per gallon and 164 grams per kilometer. Across the range, various efficient dynamics technologies are used to keep running costs in check. Uh, so there's an engine auto start stop system, as you'd expect, and at highway speeds, the cruise control can decouple the engine from the transmission uh, to reduce friction and consequently save fuel. Of course, the driver will also need to do his or her part. Um, now, the figures we just quoted assume that the car is being run in the drive performance control system's most frugal Eco Pro mode. Now, in this setting, the air conditioning and the power steering only work when required to save energy, and what's called a proactive driving assistant is activated. Now, this links in with the BMW's professional navigation system, enabling the car to detect braking situations in advance, uh, such as when you enter built-up areas, speed limit zones, uh, corners and filter lanes, and it prepares the drive system accordingly. Optimised aerodynamics uh, obviously make a big difference too. BMW has developed what it calls air breathers and air curtains. Uh, these devices are located respectively behind and in front of the uh, front wheel arches. Uh, their purpose is to reduce turbulence and therefore drag around the area of the front wheels. Now, in addition, every 5 Series model has an active Airstream kidney grill uh, at the front end with slats that stay closed when you initially first move off, so helping the engine warm up to operating temperature as early as possible. Now once that's achieved, the slats then open to aid cooling, but they're able to close again at higher speeds to improve the car's slippery shape. Now if you're wondering uh, what sort of aerodynamic benefit all these little design tweaks have, then I'll tell you that the uh, 520D Efficient Dynamics model has a slippery drag figure of just 0.22 CD, uh, which is better than that of a Toyota Prius. What else might you need to know? Um, well, routine maintenance is dictated by condition-based servicing that monitors oil level and engine wear, uh, taking into account how long it's been and how far the car's travelled since a previous garage visit. Uh, you can check all of this uh, using menus in the iDrive centre dash display and the car will give you four weeks notice of when a checkup's needed so you'll have plenty of time to book it up. Uh, to help plan ahead for the cost of regular work, uh, at point of purchase you'll be offered a BMW service inclusive package that lasts for three years and 36,000 miles. And now with this, after one-off payment, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during that period, including items like oil, spark plugs and filters. You can also insure your car through BMW, though as most 5 Series will be funded with company money through a lease deal, uh, this is likely to be bundled into that. Now if you are the one paying the premium, uh, then the 520D in SE trim or as an efficient dynamics model sits in Group 30, uh, go for the M Sport version and that rises to Group 31. For the 530D in all its guises, you'll be paying based on a Group 41 ranking. Uh, with the petrol engine 530i, your payments will be decided on a Group 35 category, uh, while the 540i comes in at Group 39 for the SE and Group 40 for the more sportily trimmed M Sport version. The other big ownership cost with a car of this kind lies with depreciation, and that's something that can often be forgotten in all the excitement of ordering a new car. Now, with the BMW, you're on very safe ground here, as the most popular 520D variant always has a willing line of used buyers keen to snap it up on the second-hand market. This means that used prices are strong, so for a 520D like this one, you can expect a retained worth of 42% uh, after three years and 60,000 miles. Now that is exactly what you'd expect from a Mercedes E220D, so the 5 Series is alongside the best performer in the sector.
Elsewhere, you may have read or seen that this 7th generation 5 series has been pronounced as the class leader in the full-sized executive segment. Now, we're not about to disagree with that assessment. A comparable Jaguar XF is lovely to drive, an arrival Mercedes E-Class is technologically advanced and great to ride in. But with a 5 Series, we think you get the best that those two competitors can offer, plus a little bit more. This time around, that ultimate driving machine tag has some credibility to it. Costly dynamic driving aids can certainly embellish what's provided, but this time around they're not absolutely needed before you can really enjoy the impressive agility and responsive handling this car has to offer. On top of that, there's a dazzling range of options, many of them unmatched by the competition, with most uh, items ready to filter down into smaller BMWs in the near future. Are there issues? Yes, a few. BMW's decision not to develop the kind of full air suspension system that you'd find as an option on a rival Mercedes E-Class means that a Merc with that setup has a small edge if your overriding priority is ride comfort. A 5 Series with optional VDC variable damper control does get close though. As we've commented in this film, without VDC, some might find its damping a little too firm. We can't find much else to grouse about though. Oh, there's premium pricing, of course, but that applies to most comparable rivals. Or at least with this BMW, you feel that money's buying you a car that showcases the current state of the automotive art. Now, whether you prioritise clever gadgetry, high-tech engineering, or sharp running costs in your full-sized executive car, this BMW operates from an agenda that will certainly impress. Conservative styled, it may be. Conservative in outlook, it certainly isn't.